Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Meseches Chulin Daf Chav Tes. We begin on Chav Ches Amit Beis on the very last line. Continuing our discussion, we had a we had a machlokes in the case of half and half, Mechza al Mechza, which the Gemara perceived at this point to be referring to a case of uh, you know Shechita as well. So if you cut through half the pipe, Rav says. Mechza, mechza, half is just as good as the majority. The whole point is that the remaining uncut portion should not encompass a majority, which in this case, it's not. Hence, it's considered like a proper shechita, despite the fact that it only went 50%. Rav Kana says, no, uh, roiv is roiv. You need a majority, an actual majority. So 50% doesn't really cut it. Okay, continues the Gemara. Toshma, here comes the Akasha. Uh, on Rav, who seems to consider a half a, a, a cut like as though it's Rav Tashma Shachat Chatzi Gargeris So he cut through half the windpipe and he paused. He paused long enough. Today, we turn to the next time, as long as it takes to make the proper Shechita. Rashi says on the top line, Hainu Shir Shehia. This is the Shir, the amount which is called Shehia. Pausation. If one pauses, a significant pause in the middle of the act of shechita, disqualifies the shechita. And then it comes back, and the Gemara figures we're talking about an animal, which requires cutting through both pipes. Vigam, when he finished the whole deal, okay, he finished the shechita. Shechita sekshir, it's okay. And the question is why? Look, initially when he cut through the first half, vi amris mechza mechza if you consider half like roiv, Itrefala. That renders the animal a trefa. Right? Now, had he cut straight through without interruption, that's a proper shchita. The thing is that he stopped, he paused. So that disconnects the first part from the second part, the first cut from the second cut. So the first cut is sort of a standalone cut. And it doesn't really qualify as shechita because it's not a complete shechita. A behemoth needs two simano here, it's just a one, a majority of one, not even a majority, right? Half, which is considered like a majority. So, in effect, it's just like an injury. It's like a trefa. He injured the animal. An animal with a split uh, gargaris, a split uh, trachea, is a, is a trefa. The animal's mechza, mechza keroiv. If you consider half like roiv, itrefala. The initial split, even though it's only half, half is right, and right makes a trefa. How could you just continue on and says they go and Cyrus with behema? Do you think we're talking about a behema? Which needs to be completed? Which requires cutting both simonims? He has to come back and finish, and over here it doesn't. No, we're talking about a bird, a fowl. Which to begin with only needed one pipe cut. Now that he cut half, he's good regardless. Why? Either way, if half is like roiv, so that's a full shechita. A bird, all, all he needs is one, one simon, the majority of one simon. So that's roiv, it's a shechita. If it's not like roiv, let's say, and even if he did less than 50%, he didn't do anything, no damage was done. And she says, it's not a trefa. So either way, it's good. Toshmai comes another kasha. On Rav. Harisha yechatsi kana pogam. Here we have an animal. Which, um, actually it was a bird. <laughs> okay. Half his kana was split. Which is not yet a trefa. Half is okay. The Hosevel of Kolshu takes his knife and pushes through the slit and pushes it past the 50 mark line. 50% mark. We go right. Okay, and that completes the Shechita. Shechita Sekshera works. So it was half split. He pushed it half past the halfway mark. It's okay. The question is why? 
Before he got involved, the kana was half split, half is like rave, which makes it a trefa. The Amrus, Mechza Mechza Karev, if half is like Rav, Trefa Havya, it was already considered a Trefa. How could you go ahead and uh, make it Kasha? Amar Rava, Shani, Linyan Trefa. Although by, by Shrita we say cutting half is like the majority, but by Trefa it's not so. It needs to be more severely uh, da- damaged and injured than just half. The bein and roiv hanir leinayim. When we speak about the kana being roiv split, half is not enough. Half is regarded like roiv in halacha. It has a significance as a chashivus, like roiv to a certain extent, but it's not actually roiv. It's not roiv hanir leinayim. It's not visibly roiv, and that's what's needed by treifa. So wherever we have the Allah of Roy by Trefa, it's like the Kana, like the Chuta Shadra, it has to be mostly, obviously mostly cut. Visibly, clearly cut. Only a bias, if I respond, why would you say that? Why would the uh, parameter of Roy, why would the definition of majority have one meaning when it comes to Trefa, and one meaning when it comes to Shrita? Will I call the Chenu? Won't you just say for sure? Kolshkin, of course. That if half is su- sufficient for shechita, it is sufficient for trefa as well. If anything, all the more so. Uma trefa do mashu mitarfa. By trefa, despite that sometimes, even a little nick, a little puncture, in some cases, in some instances, is regarded like a significant injury, which renders it a trefa. Rashi says, for example. Um, if the veshet gets a hole, if the ray of the lungs, hadaka, the intestines, which highlights the fragility of the animal, of the bird. Hecha in ruba. Nevertheless, regarding those items, where they're only treif if they're mostly injured, mostly cut. Be'inan roiv hanir le'naim. You're insisting that it has to be a visible, an obvious roiv. Can't just be 50%, it has to be over 50%, something which is visibly most majority. So again, despite the fact that, that Trefa, in some instances, even a, a insignificant, a relatively insignificant wound renders it a Trefa. So you see how fragile these animals are. Nevertheless, when it comes to other items which require rave, it has to be nearly nine, it can't just be 50%. Shrita, certainly by the Shrita, which to begin with, always needs a rave. The Adi Kiruba, Kasher, until you have a rave, it doesn't become kosher. So shechita is, is, is based on raif, without any exception. Of course, like Kalshkin, of course, wouldn't you agree to be in raif? That when raif is needed, it has to be hanir nine, visibly raif. Can't just suffice with a half cut. Allah says, the more you're 100% right. We're going to backtrack. We're not going to apply this idea to shechita. By shechita, raif is raif. Ella de Kuliyama, all agree. Merza, merza, if it's just half cut, ain't no kurev, regarding shkita, it's not like roiv. The chiitma, the rabbi, the rafkahana, in a pesachitma, our discussion, our machlekes, between rabbi says half is like, in a way like roiv, and rafkahana disagrees. It is not pertaining to shkita, rather pertaining to a totally different topic, a different subject of pesach. Allah is that if the, if the nation is mostly tummy, then, you know, typically a person, a private, a single individual is tame. You can't do the uh, the carbon pesach at the first opportunity on, on the first nisan, uh, on the uh, on nisan on the, on the pesach rishon. We'll have to wait. He'll defer to pesach sheni in ear, but not so when it's uh, the entire nation or, or the majority of them. If they're tame, they do the pesach uh, in its right time, in nisan, even though it's being done in a state of tumah. So again, an individual defers to pesach sheni. At Sibur, the community, the public, the nation, if they have an issue of tumor, they do it right then and there. So itma, we have a discussion. Suppose it's nor this nor that, not uh, an individual, nor is it the entire community. It's somewhere in the middle, it's half and half. What status does it have? So do the uh, the people who are tummy wait for Pesach Sheni, despite 
encompassing half the community? Or do we say, no, 50%, that's not like individuals, that's a, it's a lion's share of the community, it's like, a, it's like rife. In which case, they'll do it now, despite the fact that they're tummy. It Maharishi Hayu Yisrael of Kal Yisrael was Mechza Tahirim, Mechza Tmeim, half Tari, half Tummy. What do the Tmeim do? They do it now, in a state of Tumah, given the status of a community, or do they wait until Pesach Sheni, given the status of individuals? Rav Omar Mechza, Mechza Kuraif, they're like Raif. And they do it now, despite the fact that they're Tummy. For Rav Khan Omar, no. We're not talking in the entire community. Nor are we t- talking about most of the community. It's only 50% that are Tamim. They don't have the status of Raib. They defer to Pesach Shein. So that's the context of their Machlekes. And there's a special reason for it. Why would Rav say half is like the majority? I mean, half is half, right? So in fact, what is Rav's basis over there to consider half like the majority? Because we have a special Pesach which says, look, only Ish now it says, ish, ish, an individual, a private person, ki a tummy, a nefesh, if he's tummy, he defers to Pesach Sheni. The emphasis on ish tells us, ish, nitch, only a private person. Or if he's just a, a small percentage. But vein tzibor nitch, if there's entire tzibor. And 50% is a tzibor. So even though it doesn't encompass the entire, or most of the nation, but uh, it's significant enough. It's not, it's not ish. So on the one hand you have Sibur, you have the, um, you know, the entire nation or Rav, on the other side you have the, the Yachid, in the middle you have 50-50. Mechts. So although he's not the entire Sibur, he's not the entire nation, but he still doesn't fit into the ish description. And therefore, he doesn't refer to Pesach, they don't refer to Pesach Sheni, they do it right then and there, despite their term. Okay, so in a nutshell, when it comes to uh, Shechita, all agree, 50% doesn't cut it. The question was regarding Pesach Sheni. Perhaps says Mechza is Kiroiv. So despite the fact that they're Tommy, they do it now. During Nisan, Afghanistan disagrees. Now, now, the Mishnah began, this is back in the beginning of the parak, by telling us that Shechita, by a bird, involves one simon, most of the of the cut simon is considered like the entire simon was cut, so majority works. And the Mishnah at the end recaps it and reviews it again. By a bird, if it's mostly uh, one pipe, mostly cut, by the animal, two. But why this repetition? Roiv works, and then again, Roiv works. Why repeat the same concept at the end of the Mishnah, which has already been discussed in the beginning of the Mishnah? When we said, We're talking about two different types. The beginning of the Mishnah is speaking about one type of bird or one type of behemoth. The ending of the Mishnah refers to a different type of bird and a different type of behemoth. Chad of Chulin, one, is discussing Chulin, the Chulin category of birds and animals. The Chad of and one, addresses Karbanois. The bird carbon, or the animal carbon. Now, why do we need to refer to both? That by a bird it's always one simon, by a behemoth it's always two. Mention it once by Chulin, again by Kachim, why that repetition? Utsricha, both are needed. There's a point, there's a lesson here. The Yashmin and Chulun, had we only discussed the regular animal, regular bird, Hasma would say, yeah, over there, one simon is enough, hodesagale beruba, most is enough. The purpose is not to extract the blood, just to shech the animal, so that does it. Aval kachin, dam utsarach. But by a carbon bird, where the point is to extract the blood and put it on the mezbeach, aim loy perhaps, Perhaps most of the cut is not enough. You have to really open it up to extract as much as you can get. Until you do a full cut on the simon. On the other hand, Vyashmin and Kachim. Had the mission only discussed Kachim, that rave works. Since the purpose is to extract the blood, so you have to do rave 
The point is not to extract the blood. Perhaps even half cut is enough. Kamash Mon comes to pass the, the Mishnah and reiterates whether it's Hulun or Kachim, most of the seven must be cut through. Now the question is, Hai Bechulun by Bechachim? So we have Roy mentioned at the beginning of the Mishnah, one. again at the end, which one was Hulun, which one was Kachim? Omar of Gahana, this Dabra makes sense that Reisha Bechulun, they say Bechachim. The first rendition is a regular bird, and then later, it's about Kach Mimai. How do we know? Because look, the, the opening phrase of the mission is Hashaychet, which obviously speaks about a regular bird, because if it's Kach, it needs Malika. If the, the mission in the opening presentation refers to Kach, Hamoylek. It should have said Hamoylek, flicking off with his fingernail. That's how we should phrase it. Oh, Elamai Sefi Bukachim. So, what are you telling me? That the uh, first reference is Chulin, and later on it's about Kachim. So, the question is again, semantics. Shchitasek Shera. Why does the mission conclude with the words Shchitasek Shera? If it's Malika, it's a different process. Malikasek Shera. And by the way, it should say Malikasek Shera. Holy Kasha, that could be answered easily. Why? I did this Alkan Behema. Because if you look at the, again at the end of the Mishnah, it says, Roy Bechadboyev which we say is talking about a, a Kachim bird, but then, V'roi Shnayim Be'Behema, refers to Behema. So on that it says, Shkita Sikshera, because by Behema it's proper Shkita. I did the Salkin Behema since the last reference was a Behema, which experienced Shkita. That explains the concluding language uh, as well. Taninam Shkita Sikshera, that's why the mission includes with Shkita Sikshera. El Arisha, the question, would really apply to the, the Arisha. There you have no uh, sort of coverage on the change of words because Michti al Eiv Kakai. The Mishnah begins with Hashaychet. Hashaychet Echad Ba'Eiv. So Hashaychet clearly speaking about the bird, directly speaking about the bird. And if it's speaking about Kachim, it wouldn't say Hashaychet, it would say Hamalek, as we explained. Isak Lekha with Kachim, if it's talking about a Kachim, Hamalek mean Bailey, should have used the word Hamalek. So that concludes our point. The Reish is Chulin, save us Kachim. And each one has a lesson. Rav Sim Barashi Omar. I'm going to support this uh, this analysis on the Mishnah. Then, in fact, the Reisha Bechulun, the opening statement of the Mishnah is talking about Chulun, and the uh, concluding statement is on Kachim. How do I know? Mihocha, based on the following point. Diktani. Because look at the Mishnah again. It said, Asheichad Echad Ba'if. Diktani Echad Ba'if. That must be Chulun. We used to talk about Kachim because if it's talking about Kachim, there are two um, applications. But by Kachim, there is a, two, two, two variations of a, a Kachim bird. There is Chatas, there is Oila. Ha'ik Oila Sa'oif. One of those uh, variations is the Oila Sa'oif, the Boye Shnei Simana, where two pipes are cut through. So why does the Mishnah mention only one? Apparently we're speaking about Chulin. Okay, Elamai Sefer B'Kachim. So what are you telling me? That the beginning is Chulin and the conclusion is Kachim. But it doesn't really match either because it, Makes a reference to roiv echad ba'ayif, roiv of one simon. Hey, by by oila, you need two. Elamai say So what are you telling me? The ending is kachim. Roiv echad ba'ayif. Why does it say roiv echad ba'ayif? Hayika oila sa'ayif the ba'ayish ne simon. What after oila sa'ayif which needs two simonim cut? That's exactly what the Mishnah means. My roiv echad. The Mishnah says roiv of one it means roiv of each one. It's just mentioning roiv. Each one, right? Depending how much, how many, how many it needs. But the point is, roiv of the of the pipe is considered cut through. By the chatas, one pipe is needed. By the oila, two. Not getting into that. My roiv echad says roiv echad. Red kol echad echad means the most of each one as required. Ubedinu delisni roiv shnayim. The truth is that the missioners could have um, specified. That you need to cut through most of both pipes, as per the oilas oif. But since it's also trying to cover for chata soif, which only needs one, so it use this sort of a pliable language. Kivan ikah chatas the sagli bechat since the the chatas suffices with one bechat semin shemach leipsikol. That's why you know it wasn't clear. The person chose not to use specific language so that it could be applied either way. Okay, Rav Papa Amar, I'm going to support this point as well. Reisha B'chulim, that the opening statement of the Mishnah refers to a chulim bird, and the 
ladder is is cut. Shemahacha based on the following analysis. The Tani Rabbi Daim Rabbi Da says, Ah Shishka Savrid, and you have to cut through the veins as well. And as we learned yesterday, Rabbi's main point is that you have to uh, cut through the veins at the point of shechit. When the blood is still, you know, flowing strongly, right? disregard that. They disagree with that. They hold that, you know, you don't have to do it right then and there. This works very well if, in fact, the mission here is discussing a chulen bird. Eli, Amos B'Kachim, but if the reference here is a kachim bird, I might plead it up on Why are the Rabbanon disputing this uh, timing issue? This timing, uh, you know, requirement. And allowing it to do the cut later. Who wants me to The whole purpose of the... Uh, Shrita, oh, the Malika, the Kachim bird is to extract the blood for Zrika, which is the focal point of the process. So, sure. If, if he's going to cut through the, the reading to get the blood out, he's going to do it right then and there at the, at the point of Malika. So, clearly, it's not Malika of Kachim that we're talking about. Rather, it's Chulim. Now, the point is because he might encounter the blood while it's being roasted, and right? Okay, don't yesterday, so the Rabbana are not uh, insistent on doing it at the point of Shrita. I'll prove that the concluding statement of the, of the Mishnah, in fact, is, is a reference to Kachim, as we're talking all along. Based on the following inference, a Tani. Because the, um, the, actually the next Mishnah says as follows. So if one does shechita on two animals at the same time in one, you know, swoop, shechita is a it's okay. Hashoichet, now the term hashoichet is sort of like, okay, it's done, it's done. It's the, if the, after the fact, it's not ideal, less than ideal. The evidence, like the evidence, yeah. Don't do it. It's not ideal. Right? So this is in the, in the next Mishnah, which presumably is, is a continuation of the first Mishnah. It's sort of continuing on the same track, right? And the mission says, doing it two shechitas at once is not recommended. Why not? What's wrong? It's a perfect cut, right? He's just uh, conserving time, and what's the problem? So, so if the subject matter is a korban, that explains why you shouldn't be doing two at once. You meant to do one at a time, as per the pasuk coming up. That's why. That explains why it's not recommended. It's not ideal. Mishum the son of Yisav. Yisav teaches us. The pasuk says, "Leretzayinchem tizbachuhu." And the drasha is like this: From the word tizbachu, we split. We say tizbachu. Tizbach means you. We're addressing a single shaykhat. You do the shechita. Shaloyu tizbach. Shaloyu shnaim shechet mizavach echad. You should do it. On your own, you don't have two people shechting a carbon at the same time with two knives or whatever, right? Um, and uh, the, uh, the the extra, you know, the extra letters, the suffix who tis who this animal at a time. Well, even one shechad, you should not be shechting two carbons at the same time. Although it's uh, spelled as but it's uh, it, it's a, it, it's um, verbalized as but in the spelling it can be it can be read as is singular. You should check right as Hence, we learn that it's a single shaykhet doing the shechita at a time, and who tells us that it has to be one animal at a time? It's b'chayuk. So, bottom line, when it comes to karbonis, ideally it should be a single shaykhet with a single animal, one at a time. And that would explain the Yalach and the Mishnah, which says, don't do two at once. El yamas b'chulin. However, if the end of the previous Mishnah, which leads into the beginning of the next Mishnah, so it's presumably the same theme, the same subject material, so talking about then what's the issue with doing two at once? I feel you can two animals at once. 
So that supports our contention that the uh, end of the Mishnah is talking about Karbanis. Vav of Shimon Lakish Savar, he also had this approach to the Mishnah, that Reisha, the beginning is Bechulun, the Sefer, and the next part is Bechachim, how do we know? Damar, Rav Shimon Lakish. So you see, Rav Shimon Lakish holds, holds of that, because he told us, he had a question, Me'acha shashaninu rubash lachat kamoyo. Since uh, in the beginning of the Mishnah we have this halacha that roiv, mostly cut, is considered a proper cut, why repeat the same in the next part of the Mishnah? At the end, why do we have to repeat it at the end? Roiv echad boiv, Rav Shaim Behema. Mostly is okay. We already learned that. And he gave an answer, because we have a Mishnah, Mesech Yuma. Regarding the Avaita Yom Kippur, which as we know was exclusively executed by the Kayin Gadol, he was the only one that could do Avaita. So it's the Kippur in the morning, they uh, deliver the carbon Tamid to the Kohen Gadol, Kratzai. He cut through, he did a Shechita, Roiva the Simanim, Umeireik, and who completed the, the Shechita, who completed the cut? Achar, a different Kohen, who's not a Kohen Gadol, Shechita al Yadai. He did the Shechita, he completed the Shechita on his behalf. Uh, why did we need two people involved? Reasons because the, 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 on Yom Kippur, the Kohen had a very tricky role. He had to do everything. Typically, by every carbon, there are several Kohanim involved. It's hard for one person to do the Shechita and to receive the blood at the same time. He's very cut. How is he going to receive the blood that's flowing out? On Yom Kippur, only the Kohen was suitable to perform all these things. Only he was qualified to do the Shechita and the collection of the blood that's flowing out as he's doing the Shechita. So the way... They accommodated that was that he did a quick roiv. He didn't cut all the way through, and then he quickly, you know, let, let the other kind take over. So he did a halachically acceptable shrita, and he quickly grabbed the uh, container and collected the blood. And the other kind completed the cut for him. That's how it's described in the Mishnah. So now comes a question: Suppose nobody completed the shrita. Nobody completed the cut. Yachel, loy merik. So perhaps if there was no other kain on hand to finish the thing, he possibly would disqualify the uh, the shechita. So the kain gadol did right, but nobody completed the cut. The kachshanino. That's why the mission has to come and emphasize in our mesecht. Technically, you don't have to cut through the whole thing. Roiv is halachically sufficient. Roiv echad beroiv. By a bird, roiv of one pipe. For roiv shnam beima behema two. Most the cut is enough. We'll see in a minute why they even bothered cutting through the rest. But uh, that's the halacha that's highlighted in our Mishnah. So clearly, the Kundim Lakish. The ending of the Mishnah, which emphasizes this point, is referring to Karbanis, as we explained. Oh, no, let's go back and review this halacha. There would be room to suggest, Yacha, loy miraki, apostle. If nobody came by to complete the cut on Yom Kippur, it's possible. We turn time and base. Really, how can we suggest that? How can we even have that notion in Cain if that's the case? That completing, you know, the cut is critical, is vital. Now, who did it? A non kain Gadol. If a non kain Gadol performed a vital, a critical portion of the Avoida in Kippur, that disqualifies the Avoida. If it's sort of a bonus, uh, you know, element, fine, but if it's something that's needed, and you're suggesting that it is, then... It's an oxymoron. How could you have another kain do it? In Cain, how the avoid the avoid is being performed by a non kain god? But tell me, we have a, a clear halacha. Tanan, there's a Mishnah. Call avoid the Kippur. The avoid the Kippur has to be performed exclusively by a kain god. Ain't in Kshir a boy. So what do you mean? How come we meant to say like this? Yachal ye pasal mit the Rabbanon. Perhaps the Rabbanon. It's pasal. It's so important. Why? Why would I say that? Perhaps I would say, They require you to, you know, extract all the blood, otherwise it doesn't. So, I mean, it's enough to cut through most. Hence, you don't need a kangal for the rest. But with the it's very important that it be done. Look, that's why we come back to our Mishnah Chulim, which says, listen, even with the most is enough. Roy v'achad one pipe mostly cut by a bird, or two mostly cut by the behemoth, even by carbonis. 
But Rav Shnei Bebehimo, it's okay. So if you neglected to cut through all the way, it's okay. Says the Gemara, okay, so it's, if it's okay, let it be okay. Why are we even uh, bothering? There's no psul There's no criticality involved. So why even bother completing the cut all the way through? It's just superfluous. Mitzvah Lamarak, the mitzvah to do so. Rashi said, Mishum Dam, to get all the blood out to enable a proper zrik. Okay, so in a nutshell, we have a Mishnah by us, which seems to have a repetition. Most of the pipe is okay. Then again, most of the pipe is okay. One is for chulin, and one is for kachim. The first part is chulin, latter is for kachim, as the uh, various uh, inferences in the, in the Mishnah indicate. Here comes a new discussion. So, the act of shechita encompasses some sort of time. It takes, you know, let's say 10 seconds to cut all the way through. Which part of it is regarded like the act of shechita? Is it just at the end? The shechita only happens at the last split second? Or is the uh, shechita sort of a, an ongoing process which begins at the start of the cut and just progressively develops and proceeds till the end? We have about this as well. Omar Rab Shimon ben Lakish. Shimon Levi Saba, he calls Levi Saba, Ein l'shechita l'basoyif. The act of shechita only gets sort of activated at the end. The last moment when he concludes the cut. Well, that's when the shechita happens. But Rabbi Yechonam, he disagrees. It's an ongoing, continuous process. Yesh no shechita, mitchil v'atzoyif. Shechita happens from the beginning to the end. And soon we'll see, you know, what it pertains to. It's not just a, an academic, you know, exercise in academics. It has a halachic implication as well. Amar Rav, listen to this. Says Rav, I'll call all would agree. A guy cut through the first pipe, which is an invalid shechita. And the Yisrael came and did the second simon. It's no good. It's possible. Why? So even if the shechita only happens at the end, and at the end who was involved in Yisrael, it's not going to help us watch. Why? Because by the time the Yisrael came along, one pipe was cut. Shari Nasa Bama said treifa, which makes it like a treifa. Look, if it's not a halachically valid shechita, it's just like an injury. But yeah, that become in the hands of the guy. So you can't fix that up. Okay, so that's pretty clear. Boilos oif nami, likewise by an oiler bird. Hecha the molek simen echa lamata. So we know that the uh, malika the act of you know, the clipping the head off of the oil of has to take place at the upper part of the Mizbech. Let's say the oil of which needs both simon and cut, as we said before. He did the Malik on one simon down, the bottom part of the Mizbech, which is not the right place. And the second simon he cut upstairs in the right place. Psulo. Again, it's possible. And even, again, even if it's the conclusion of the Shechita which renders it a Shechita, and in this case, the conclusion took place in the right location. It doesn't help us. Why? Because the first part was disqualified. Psula. Shari Asaba Masa Chata Soif Mata. Because the first simon, which is really uh, sufficient for a different bird, for Chata Soif, that gives it significance. He did an act which, in some contexts, is regarded like an act of Malika, like a full Malika. He did it in the wrong place. So it has substance, it has significance. To the extent that if it was done in the wrong place, it disqualifies the, uh, the, uh, the oil. So in these two cases, all agree it's disqualified. The machlekes of whether the shechita only happens at the end or it's an ongoing process. The only applies in the following case. Kigai, for instance, Shashachat Semenechat Bechutz. He took an oil bird which is meant to be processed in the Migdash. He did it outside the Migdash, which is a tra- severe transgression. Now, he didn't do the full Malika outside. Sheshachat simen echad b'chutz. He did only one simen outside, and then he came running in, and the simen echad b'chutz, he completed the second simen inside. Is he liable to the violation of shechut echutz, of processing a carbon outside the Beis HaMikdash? 
to know this oifel, which needs to be cut through both. What's we'll Simon? He didn't do both outsides. That's the question. Did he do Malika outside or not? The shita that says that shita starts from the beginning all the way to the end. Mechayev is chayev because after all, he did a, a, a substantial portion of shita outside. He did one sima outside. So although the the completion was inside. He has already violated the halacha. He has transgressed the halacha of shchutei chutz. Because the shchita began at the first simon. So again, the one that says that shchita begins at the, starts at the beginning of the cut and continues on till the end. Because they did a simon outside. The shita that says that shchita only happens at the end. At the conclusion of the act of Shechita, Elohim Chayv is not Chayv in this case because the conclusion was inside. Amalei Rabba Bar Simi. So Rabba Simi argued this point. He says, Mar Lo the master, didn't, didn't agree with this. Who's the master? Umani Rav Yasef. He disagrees. He says, Of course he's Chayv according to all Shechitas. Because after all, he did a substantial portion. He did a full simon outside, which in some cases is regarded like a full shechita, like Vaychata Sa'ayif. So although this was an oil Sa'ayif which needs both simon and cut, but this act of shechita, cutting through one simon, has substance. It's regarded like an act of shechita in a Chata Sa'ayif. So if he does it outside, he did, a, he did it in a way, you can say he did a full act of shechita outside his chayev. Ma'alai ma'achim, Mordor of Yasef. He says, Hecha de shachat simon echa b'chutu. When he did shechita on one simon outside, the second simon inside, not a puzzle. It's also a puzzle. Which means to say he's chayev. Why? Shari osaba masa chata soif. When he cut one simon outside, which is a full shechita regarding a chata soif, although this is the oil soif, it doesn't matter, but regarding a chata soif, it has substance. It's considered a full act of shechita. And he did it outside, b'chutz. She has kibbered the isr of shechut echutz. So again, this case all agrees chayev. When echel gemachalik is only applies in the following case. He didn't do a full simon outside. Elok he goin sheshachat miyot. Simana Bachutz. Vigamran Ogam Rai Bifnim. He did only a small portion of a simon outside and he completed it inside. So if we focus on the actual part that he did outside, it's not a full anything. But eventually he did complete it inside. The one that says Shechita begins at the initial initiation of the cut and continues on continuously till the end. Machayv says Chayv in this case. Because whatever was done outside is also part of the Shechita. Machayv. The one that considers Shechita only at the very end. Like Machayv is not Chayv in this case because he uh, he just started in the on the on the uh, outside. Most of Rav Zera have a question to Rav Zera on on the opinion Rav Yechonah's opinion, who says that Shechita is a continuous, ongoing process from beginning to the end. We have a Mishnah called Asukin Vepara Mitchilav Atzayif Metamin Begodim. Any anyone involved in the uh, Paraduma process, whether the this Shechita or you know, burning the paraduma, his begotten become tummy. That's the Allah. Number two, those that are involved in processing the paraduma have to be fully focused, without distraction. It can be doing another thing at the same time. And this applies to all those that are involved in any aspect of processing the paraduma. Now, the begotten this that the begotten become tummy only applies to an individual who is involved in the paraduma's process if the paraduma was a successful kosher paraduma. Now let's say irub apsul b'shchitasa. Something went awry. Something went wrong. It was a failed shchit. Right? 
paraduma no longer is considered a kasher of paraduma, and it will not affect the clothing, it will not be metamid the begadim of those that are involved. Bein koydim psula. So, an individual that was involved, whether he was involved before the shechita failed, which means to say he was involved in the beginning of the shechita before it failed, bein psula, or whether he was involved after it went ori, einam metamid begadim. So the Paraduma doesn't have the ability to affect his clothing. Baza Asa. But if the, um, the Psal, the failure occurred later on, after the Shechita, later on when they were involved in spraying the blood, they have to you know, spray it seven times towards the Hechel. So what happened at that late stage, what happens to the Bugadim of those that are involved? Those that were involved before it became possible, their begotten become effective. Because at that early stage, the power was still okay. It still has the ability, had the ability to affect their clothing. But those that are involved now after the psula occurred, the, the paraduma sort of has, has already been deactivated, and therefore it doesn't affect their begotten. Now the question is like this. Are you going to tell me, Yes, no, the 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 Shechita process begins when you start cutting and continues until the end. If that's the case, then lift like Nami Bishchitasa. We should make the same distinction. If the uh, failure occurred during the Shechita as well, how? Suppose the psal happened during the shechita. What happens to those that are, were involved in the process? Those that were involved before the psal happened during the shechita, the begadim become tummy because they were involved in an act of shechita, irrespective of the fact that it became puzzle later. So even though the shechita itself went ari, but the first part of the shechita was was technically uh, an act of shechita. Shechita is a, a, a continuous process. Sure, after the psal happened, it's no longer going to be time of the begadim. But the brayse doesn't say that. The brayse says, if the shechita itself failed, that's it. We're out of business. Then even those that were there before the psal. Their begadim are spared. Why? The act of shechita isn't just sort of a at the conclusion of the shechita, in which case if it failed, the whole thing retroactively never happened. No, shechita is an ongoing thing. So the beginning of the shechita is a valid shechita, despite the fact that it became possible later. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact that the shechita failed mid-process, but the beginning was Technically, it can still consider an act of shechita. So those that were there should become tummy. I'm a rubber, no. Even Rabbi Yechon would agree that, you know, if the shechita failed, then it's a non-starter. When Rabbi Yechon says the shechita begins now and ends at the end, that's when ultimately it was a successful shechita. So retroactive, the whole thing is a proper, you know, sort of, it, 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 it developed it, it built up. Until the end. But, if it, it was not a, a successful shechita, then the whole thing is a failed entity. It's a non-star. never took off. Amar Rav, in the Skagla, shechita, Ka'amri, talking about a case where the shechita failed, Ka'amri, Shani Hassan, there it's very different. The Glory Mislav Frey, it's been revealed retroactively that never was a non-starter. The Lav Shechita Yiklal. So, of course, in this case, even Rabbi Yechon agrees. There's nothing to talk about. Amar Rav, says Rav like this, you know what, you're right. Ikashali Hakashali. If there's anything to ask, it's as follows. Let's shift over. The Omar ain't a shechita el basayif. According to the opinion that shechita only kicks in at the very end, when you complete the act, that's when it's considered shechita. If that's the case, let's go back to that brisa, which is looking for a, a differentiation, a distinction. Which uh, fellows begadim will become affected, which ones will not? Before, yeah, after, not. Lift like bechshera de para. So. Forget about a, a, a para which uh, which failed. Let's speak about a, a properly, 
you know, process paraduma. Even there, we can have a distinction with respect to Tumas Begot. For instance, the Shechtu Betrei Gavri. Two people were involved in the Shechitu. So Ruben did part of the cut, Shimon resumed and completed. Now, if the Shechitu only happens at the very end, upon completion, so Ruben uh, spears his Begotim. Because although he began the process, he wasn't there at the very end. Which is when the Shechita slash, you know, the Tuma kicks in. The Gavra Kama, so the first fellow, Loi Metama. His begadam will not become Tami. The Gavra Basra Metama, regarding the second person who completed the act of Shechita, his begadam will become Tami through the Paraduma. If in fact, Shechita only happens at the end. Why didn't the Brisa refer to this case, if in fact it's true? Amr Yasef, no. Technically, you're right, but practically, it was not really uh, relevant. We don't have two people doing a shrita on one paraduma. We discussed this earlier, right? I'm going to say, Trey Gabri, two fellows, Bechad, Zivcha, and one carbon. Amr, you're talking about that type of uh, scenario? Bar Mineta, let's leave it out of the equation. Bar Mineta, the Tanina, we already learned earlier, it's a bright so You're not supposed to have two people involved in one, uh, in one shrita of a carbon. Tizbach, right? Tizbach is Lashon Yacha, singular, addressing one individual, one Shaykhet per carbon. Shlai you Shnaim Shaykhet in Zavach Echad, rather than two people doing Shrita on one carbon. And Tizbach Hu, the Hu says, one Shaykhet per carbon. Shlai you Hei Echad Shaykhet Shnei Zavachim. You shouldn't be doing a Shrita on two carbonas as one. Lord Afghani explains the, you know, the spelling Tizbach Hu. See, we read it like Tizbach Hu. You should be doing this Vicha. So, in any case, it's not really relevant. It's not something that we do, anyways. Only Abaye. That's according to one opinion, yeah. Love it, my haven't we learned an explanation on that price? Amar Rabba, Bar Bar Chana, Amar Zu, this limitation, upon having two Shechtam on the same curb, Zu, that's the opinion of Rabbi Lazar, but Rabbi Shimon, Stimta. We very often, Bryce's, Mishnahs and Bryce's are reflective of his, of his opinion. Anonymous Mishnahs and Bryce's are reflective of his opinion. So in any case, that's his opinion reflected in this price. You can't have two, you shouldn't have two you know, people doing the shechita on one. Avel chachamim, they disagree. I mean, they say you can have, you're free to have two shechitim on the same carbon. Bez shechitim, zevech echad. According to them, we'll back to the question. Why didn't we cite this example? Furthermore, with Lord Blazer, Rabbi Shimon, even according to him, Nam, even according to his opinion, where it's one shechit per carbon, we can still have this type of differentiation. Live like we can split between before and after. For instance, Kigoyin the Shechet Chagav. Fine, it's one person. Agreed. One Shechet. But he switched caps in the middle. <laughs> okay, so for the first five seconds of the, of the Shechita, first Simon, he was wearing one cap, one head covering, and then in the middle he switched head coverings. Which he had, you know, till the, till the end. So, if you say Shechita only happens at the very end, the first cap is uh, Spirit of Tumah. So here we have a very fair, practical application to this halacha. Again, the Shechat Chad Gabra, Shnei Sudarim, one man did Shechita, wearing two caps, so he, he switched in the middle. And we're going to differentiate between the first and the second. The Sudar Kam is first, head wrapping, Loi Matam will not become Tame because... That was only present at the initiation, which is not regarded as an act of shechita. So the basra, the last uh, head covering will become tummy. So why wouldn't the bryser refer to that type of scenario? Ella, so you must say like this. One answer to all the questions. You're right and you're right. Upsula de parakamari. The bryser is looking for distinctions in a case of a failed paradum. And that highlights the chiddush that even though the Ultimately, the paraduma was not successful. Still, it has the ability to be mitabi begadim for those who were involved, provided they were there before the psul occurred. That's a chiddush. The psul of the parakamari. So we want to focus on that. We're not, we're not going to refer to a case of a paraduma which was successfully processed. Although, technically, you can find a scenario within that type of circumstance that would also bring out this point. Some begadim will, some begadim won't, depending... Okay, so there's no real caution, no real raya from this halacha against 
any uh, opinion discussed earlier. Okay, so in summation, which part of the act of shechita is considered a shechita? Rish Lakish says, only at the end, upon completion. And Rabbi Yechon says, it's a continuous process from beginning to end. And the, uh, the only enough community we came up with was in the case of he did the, uh, the malika outside the... Uh, Outside the uh, the base of Migdash, the Shkita outside the Migdash, and um, he only did a small part of it, and he completed it inside. If you say Shkita only happens at the very end, so he's safe because at that point he was already inside. If you say Shkita is a continuous process from beginning to end, so he did Shkita outside, it's high because of Shkita Chutz. Okay, to continue the Hashem in tomorrow's daf. All the best to you and much at Slocha.